Good morning, everyone. Moline Lake, day two. As you can see, spectacular scenery behind me. Chasing rookies and rainbows and crystal clear water today, just like yesterday. Floating lines, strike indicators, small black and red coronaments, PBRs, zucchinis. It's shaping up to be another great day. We've got a beautiful coronament ripple on the water. And Ryan's into a fish already. Oh, it's beautiful. Got a jumper. Let's go see what he's got. What were you doing, Ryan? Oh, well, just hanging chronomids underneath the indicator and it disappeared. So I lifted the rod and put a three pound bow here, came up out of the water a couple of times. You may have heard it. Too bad Phil was a little slow on the camera, but <laughs> well, uh, let's see what this is all under here. He's fighting good. These fish sure fight good. And I don't know if it's because they live in such cold water or what it is, but Pound for pound, some of the toughest fighting fish you're going to find. Not because they're embarrassed you caught them? Oh, going to be one of those days. Day two, folks. Stay tuned. It's going to get chuckly. <laughs> oh, he's fighting good. Doesn't want to come home. He wrapped himself there and then. That beautiful fish put up a great fight. Slammed that PBR and came flying out of the water about three or four times. So thanks. Go get big. Well, this uh, we're just about to land what we're calling Timu Salani here. We got a hockey heroes edition going on in Moline Lake. Yesterday I didn't count how many fish Phil and I caught. Uh, typically, we're always counting how many fish we get, and so today we decided to play a little game with it. We're going to name them by hockey players and see if we can't get a total count for you by the end of today. So there he is in all his glory, uh, number eight, Mr. Tito Solani. We've got a one of the all-time greats on. All one of the all-time greats here, uh, hockey heroes edition, Moline Lake. Gordy Howe, number nine. Phil and I have been anchored here uh, just off the Moline River for the last 45 minutes or so and already in nine fish. This one uh, slammed the indicator and came flying out of the water a couple times. Real beautiful Moline Lake rainbow trout. Mr. Hockey Trout. Mr. Hockey. That's right, here he is. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Hockey. It was a pleasure. Put on a crazy acrobatical display for us and go make some more and get bigger. Alright. I got the moose. The Hockey Heroes Countdown. Number 11, Mark Messier. I live in Alberta now. There's a street in St. Albert named after him. Wow, God, these fish are beautiful. Little black and reds, 14s. Oh, that's a rainbow. Sun's coming out. I think we're going to have to drop a layer soon. Wow, these fish are so strong, so beautiful. Flickering. A rainbow.
Put that side pressure in there. Love these long rods, just great for indicator fishing. Mm. I might have to give them one more strip to get them in. Nice fish, buddy. Top dead center, right? Out in the schnauzki. Flies out. Look at that beautiful fish. Is that a that's something else? Wow. Oh, off he goes. <laughs> 120, 125 miles that way. Skates like Messier too. <laughs> <laughs> Hockey's hockey hero edition here, Malian Lake. We're at five mile and Phil just landed a fish and my indicator went down and this is Number 19, we're calling him Steve. Steve Eiserman, obviously. Another beautiful Moline Lake rainbow trout. Big run right at the beginning, but he's fought hard. Pound for pound, these fish fight harder than anything you've ever seen. I'm not really sure if it's a cold water. This lake is completely glacier fed, so we're talking real cold water temperatures, but they still love chronomids. Well, it's... 1230 about the midpoint of the day we just passed 19 Stevie Y Mr. Iserman Hall of Famer Detroit Red Wing original six player we've had a setback too not sure if you can see we're missing an anchor on the front pleat it dragged and somehow unclipped the carabiner so a little more challenging we still got to stir an anchor we're still able to hook fish and control our drifts should be a great afternoon but uh, that's the score at halftime. So Ryan, what's that now? Uh, this is number 37 here and uh, oh! We don't get to count the ones we don't get to the boat, so. It's okay. Still looking for number 37, but. I don't think we had a 37 in our uh, Hall of Fame or any player category, so maybe it's just as well. But give us some more time to think about who might 37 be. <laughs> We're having ourselves a pretty good day. We're trying to hit 40 on the NHL meter here. Um, not sure who 40 was. We're having a tough time, but we set Ryan up for dangling. He's got the Type 7 line on. Set it for a foot off the bottom. We're watching the sounder for signs of big images. We're seeing a few go by. So it's a chance for us to relax a little bit. Maybe have a bite to eat and wait for that savage, savage grab. Let's hope we get to 40. So the wind's picked up a little bit here and uh, we lost our anchor, front anchor earlier so it's a bit of a challenge with indicators. So we decided to push out a little deeper. The water temperature's come up a bit so we're going to see if we can get some deeper. We're going to try dangling here. We're looking for 40 fish on the day. I actually can't think of an NHL with number 40 but... Um, so we're going to dangle and just ice fishing weight here. Chronomid pupa pattern. We're going to clip that on. We're going to drop that down to the bottom. we we'll bring it up about a foot. Hold our line where it needs to be in the fishing position. Bring it back up, take off the weight, and drop all this type seven nice Rio line down and hang on because they smash them. Stay tuned. Got all set up, time to eat, let's yeah. wait. Perfect opportunity here, half a sandwich. Been a long day, catch lots of fish, but still gotta have a rod in the water while I have lunch, so dangling's a perfect way to do that. Waiting for one of those savage hits. There we go, <laughs> on the dangle, whoa! They get excited, they often follow that pull up. And this was just, not the savage take, this was a tap tap, I plowed them. You usually get really good hook sets, because you drive that fly right in the upper part of their beak. A little brook trout here. Type seven line, they got some 
four feet a liter in total, three feet of 2x to a swivel, a couple feet of 3x to a number 12 zucchini, a little bigger than what they've been feeding on, but they seem to like when we dangle in deep water. You can get away with a larger, get away with those larger flies. Zucchini with a silver rib, or zucchini with a red rib, that's been the super du jour today going around in circles in the net, trying to make himself dizzy, the fly's out. Real quick here, you can see him. On the dangle! Woo! Our target still eludes us. Winds come up. Losing that anchor earlier has, has, an, has had an effect, as it's harder to hold when we're dangling. The boat's swaying, we can't stay over top of the sinking line, so we're going to pick up and try to find a more sheltered area on the other side of the lake I've yet to visit so uh, we should get to do this I'm hoping I'm praying I'm thinking but it's always fun to explore it's such a beautiful lake Wow well just winding up our Malene Lake adventure I thought I'd quickly go over what we were using today uh, primarily we're using five and six weight rods nine and a half ten foot in length indicator systems dominated today floating lines uh, tapers designed for chucking indicators we had uh, indicator style leaders lengthened up to uh, so we could fish 15 16 feet down small coronamids most of the day in fact all of the day black and reds we talked about those and we dangled fast sinking lines type sevens uh, density compensated short leaders total leader length four feet maybe five feet uh, two sections of tippet, uh, 2x and 3x connected by a small barrel swivel about a size 12. And again, coronamids, uh, 12s, 14s, 16s, black and reds, like my PBRs, zucchinis, those kind of flies. Both of those flies are on my YouTube channel. Check them out if you want to learn more. If you want to learn more about the uh, techniques and uh, how we were fishing today, be sure to download mine and Brian Chan's Stillwater Fly Fishing app. There's a wealth of information there. Uh, keep you busy for a long time and you can download it and uh, save it to your smartphone so you can access it in beautiful places like Malene Lake. We don't even have Wi-Fi service. So that's what we're using. Uh, give those a try the next time uh, you're out on your local waters. And of course, if you get the chance to come lean, you got to try it. Use them here. They'll work well for you. Well, our NHL count up is done. Got uh, 50, I believe. We're not even sure who number 50 is, but I want to thank Ryan for taking me out on Malene Lake, a bucket list destination for many years for me, catching these beautiful brook trout and rainbow trout in one of the most scenic settings I've ever had the good fortune to chuck a fly. Um, if you ever want to come out here yourself, you can camp here in Jasper National Park. Lots of accommodations in Jasper itself. If you want to come out and hire a guide, you can do that as well. Online Sports has a great guide service. If you're curious about uh, some of the tricks and techniques and flies, check out the links below for um, uh, information on mine and Brian Chan's Stillwater Fly Fishing app. Lots of great information there that you can download and subscribe to. You can check out some of the flies we're using here today and other ones, in particular the zucchini and the PBR, and of course the equipment I was using today and how it was all set up. So until next time, we'll hopefully see you on the water.